he and his team had come up with solid data that suggested PS could literally turn back the clock on brain aging. Anyone wanting to live a long life will need a powerful brain. And frankly, no matter what generation you ask, brain health and mental well-being is going to be at the top of their longevity. Uh, wish list. Now, today we're going to talk about a nutrient that is fundamental to the brain's capacity to make energy and to use that energy to power its tens of billions of cells and trillions of nerve cells or synapses. And this nutrient is called phosphatidylserine, or more commonly referred to as PS, which is how we're going to refer to it moving forward. To unpack this nutrient and its role in healthy aging, I have Dr. Paris Kidd here with me today, who's spent decades of his career studying and sharing PS with the world. And PS wouldn't be as known as it is today if it weren't for him. So, Dr. Kidd, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to diving into this nutrient because, frankly, it hasn't been part of my brain stack, but I have a hunch that it is going to be at the top of my list after this conversation. So, let's dive in a little bit more into what's one thing. First of all, I want to share people share with people who you are. So, I'd like to see what's one thing people should know about you and why you do what you do, especially when it comes to PS. Well, thanks for your kind introduction, Claudia. Uh, I earned my PhD in life sciences at the University of California at Berkeley, and I've worked with dietary supplements for over 40 years. So what's the most interesting fact about PS, and why is it even worth talking about? Well, this is the nutrient that's best documented for improving memory, plus it's very safe to take. So to be, to be fair and to be factual, any dietary supplement that doesn't contain PS and is said to be intended for memory is incomplete. Uh, PS has to be uh, the core ingredient for memory because it is by far the most consistently beneficial and the best documented. And it is a nutrient that is present naturally in all of our brain cells, and frankly, in all of our cells and most densely in our brain. Is that right? That is correct. It's present in all of our cells, and it's present in every known cell on the planet. And within our cells, it works in these structures called cell membranes, and cell membranes are the bases for practically all of our life processes and none of our cell membranes in none of our cells can work properly without containing PS. PS is a, a fundamental building block for all of our cells. And we're going to dive a little bit into later about what PS is, what, what category of nutrients it fits into, but Prior to this recording, you had mentioned to me there are urban legends about PS. I'd like to address them a little bit to make sure we debunk any myths that is out there. Yeah, I actually get quite amused sometimes when I read what um, is, some, is said about PS on the internet. As I work to educate the public about the science behind PS, there were other parties that wanted to sensationalize PS to endow it with qualities far beyond what the science supported. So they pushed hard. Um, they pushed PS hard for exercise recovery, which is not supported by the available research. They aggressively promoted PS for lowering the stress hormone cortisol, which is also not supported by the research. Some claim that attaching omega-3 fatty acids to the PS molecule made it work better which also isn't proven by the available research. From the beginning of my working with PS, I insisted on staying with the findings from the published research, and especially with the solid evidence from well-designed, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trials, of which we have a lot on PS. There's still lots of misinformation out there on PS, but the documented information is more than sufficient to prove it can improve brain health. So uh, 
whereas there are all those other myths about it, the core understanding about PS is that it's the it's the best dietary supplement a person can take for their memory. This is literally one of the only nutrients that the FDA has approved claims for. So we'll dive into that later, but I do want to ask about your history with PS. How did you come across this nutrient and, and share a little bit about how you've made PS known, not only nationally, but on an international level? Well, I, I had um, uh, a client in Germany, um, a family company, uh, very nice people um, that had pioneered the manufacturing of a plant food extract called lecithin. And lecithin is still used a lot uh, in the, in the um, production of foods. They contacted me about a special lecithin derivative called PS or phosphatidylserine, which technically is a phospholipid. As I reviewed the clinical trial evidence on PS, I quickly realized there was good quality, consistent evidence that it worked for memory. And further, PS was a cell membrane nutrient, and I had worked on cell membranes for my PhD at Berkeley. So I decided to commit to establishing this remarkable nutrient as a dietary supplement ingredient. So for years, I traveled extensively in the U.S. and Canada, making numerous presentations about PS. I took the message to Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia. I also published extensively on PS. My German client, led by an executive named Peter Roda, an excellent scientist, Dr. Michael Schneider, enthusiastically supported my efforts to educate the world about PS, and I owe a great debt to that. I also met and made friends with Dr. Tom Crook, Thomas Crook, who had done two excellent clinical trials on PS while a researcher at the U.S. NIH, the National Institutes of Health. He and his team had come up with solid data that suggested PS could literally turn back the clock on brain aging. So make a person's brain younger than their performance would suggest. And Dr. Crook's rigorous clinical research on PS had convinced him that PS was for real, that it could revitalize the fading human brain, and that it could change people's lives for the better. So let's take a quick look at how PS can revitalize the brain. PS can improve the brain's energy production, which is crucial for its billions of nerve cells that happen to be the body's largest and most energy consuming cells. The human brain needs a lot of energy to function. Essentially, you may have heard this elsewhere, um, at least 20% of the body's energy at rest, and perhaps as much as 50% of the body's energy when it's working. And PET imaging can be used to measure a brain's energy generation from looking at its consumption of blood glucose, labeled blood glucose. The blue and green in the upper PET scan indicates low energy generation in this elderly, in this elderly woman's brain. The yellow and red in the lower PET scan indicates greatly increased energy generation in her brain after taking PS for three weeks. So by energizing the brain, by improving the brain's ability to make energy and provide that energy uh, or to, to utilize that energy for electrical connectivity, information, um, integration, and all of that, PS is a foundational nutrient for the human brain. That is fascinating. And what makes this really interesting is that we're not only talking about lab studies and animal models and vitro stuff, but we're actually talking about human trials, clinical trials, randomized placebo controlled trials, and not one, but multiple. So many scientists talk about different benefits of nutrients truly are efficacious if the same protocol can be repeated and the same result can be achieved. And that's one of the things that PS has shown over the course of 
many years. Absolutely right, Claudia. And, and you know, Claudia, uh, talk is cheap. Um, you know, influencing people is easy. But uh, when we're talking about something as vulnerable and as crucial for the quality of life as the brain, uh, I take it very, very seriously that we need the highest level of clinical evidence that we can have in order to recommend an ingredient for supporting or promoting or enhancing brain function. PS actually has a lot of research uh, at all levels um, of uh, investigation. So I checked yesterday, August of 2024, and... Uh, it had, there were, on PubMed, it had 2,930 entries. But the core of the clinical understanding in, on, of PS lies in 30 double-blind trials. So let's dive into those research outcomes for both memory and learning and potentially stress and mood. There are three broad categories of people who can benefit from PS. Uh, First, there are middle-aged or elderly persons with memory problems. Then there are young, middle-aged or elderly persons facing stressful challenges. And then there are young or old persons who have mood challenges, particularly when they're under stress. So those are the main three categories of individuals who can benefit. And it really adds up to practically everyone above the age of 21, uh, 21 or older. So to, to get into the research about memory, um, there were 10 double-blind clinical trials conducted with PS specifically for memory. The first trial conducted by Dr. Crook, working in the National Institute of Mental Health at the NIH, together with colleagues at Stanford and Vanderbilt universities and in Italy, turned out to be a breakthrough trial. This trial was highly innovative because it used tests that the individuals could do on video screens, pioneering interactive psychometric testing backed up by excellent statistical analysis. The trial recruited healthy persons aged 50 to 75 who tested positive for what was then called age-associated memory impairment, which though not a disease, was a confirmation that their memory was measurably poorer than healthy young adults' memory. These subjects received 300 milligrams per day of PS or randomly assigned received a placebo for 12 weeks. Periodically, they had to take video tests of learning names and faces, memory for names and faces, learning and remembering telephone numbers even while distracted, which is also called working memory and very relevant to our everyday work, um, finding misplaced objects such as keys and glasses, memorizing whole written paragraphs, and other tests relevant to everyday cognitive challenges that people face. So from all of this um, interactive video-based psychometric testing, Crook's group found that subjects who entered the trial with the poorest memory performance outperformed those on placebo for memory of names, matching names with faces, remembering telephone numbers, finding misplaced objects, memorizing written paragraphs, ability to concentrate while distracted and on overall cognitive function. This trial conducted by this international group um, centered on the US National Institutes of Health came up with some really, really in-depth and persuasive data. And the researchers concluded in print, quote, people most likely to respond to PS appear to be those who score above the range of cognitive performance associated with dementing disorders, but who perform in the low range of normality for persons of the same age. And this solid data from the NIH trial led by Dr. Tom Crook 
allow them to use the PS trial data to calculate that PS may have helped relatively memory impaired participants in the trial reverse as much as 12 years worth of memory decline. That is, a person with test results at the beginning of the trial, equivalent to a functional brain age of say 70 years, might perhaps improve to a functional age of 58 years or from 65 years to 53 years as examples. So the idea of gaining back as much as 12 years worth of lost memory is quite incredible. And it doesn't stop there with, with, with PS because besides helping our uncle, you know, who clearly is not as sharp as he used to be, PS also can help people with more serious memory problems. In a large Italian double-blind trial conducted by Sanacci and colleagues, 425 elderly subjects took either PS or a placebo for six months. PS outperformed the placebo on tests for verbal learning and memory, as well as tests for social withdrawal and apathy, which is characteristic of people who are really having trouble. They tend to pull back from their friends and society. Sinatra's team also did a lot of blood testing and other clinical assessments and found that PS was very safe for these older people to take. The findings from this large Italian trial uh, on indicating that PS could even improve more serious memory problems were supported by another U.S. trial, another American trial, also done by Crook and colleagues at the National Institutes of Mental Health of the NIH. So among those persons with serious memory problems who received PS, those with the less severe problems benefited the most. So if a person is really far gone, there are no guarantees. If they're having serious issues, but they're willing to use PS and to do other things like aerobic exercise, improving their diet, their lifestyle, etc., you know, dropping the alcohol, dropping the smoking, PS can give them a chance to regain some of what they've lost. So although it's not a miracle memory cure, uh, PS can be a nutrient that improves the human health span. So as we would say that PS can improve the human health span, that is the span of life during which a person can be healthy in a, in a, in a really... Um, um, genuine way, a really authentic way of being healthy. We could also think of PS as a longevity nutrient because our capacity to make smart decisions, particularly when under stress, which is everyday life, isn't it, increases our chances of survival and long life. So PS, by helping to preserve our memory and other brain fitness, also can help extend how long we live. Because the better the decisions we can make, the better the chances we have for living a longer life. So in that sense, PS is a longevity nutrient. So PS is not only the best documented nutrient for memory enhancement, but the safest as well, with a practically flawless record after decades of use around the world. Anyone concerned about their memory can confidently consider taking PS as part of a comprehensive personal program that ideally would include optimizing their diet, exercise, lifestyle, and spirituality. Yeah, I mean, this is this is fantastic, and so me it's so enlightening to really see all of these different studies that are comprehensive with with large sample sizes and really dive into different ways of assessing an individual's memory and and a mental health decline and any type of uh, learning disability that they may have had. And I would love to highlight a little bit here since we talk about, which is fantastic, that it is a supplement. So it's it's not, you can't out supplement an unhealthy lifestyle no matter what. 
So with many supplements, the FDA can be very strict, but when it comes to PS, can you share a little bit about how it's unique in the world of FDA? Well, PS actually has a very rare distinction. Um, PS has received recognition by the FDA, grudging recognition, but recognition nonetheless. Uh, the FDA has acknowledged that PS is special by granting not just one, but two what are called qualified health claims. So qualified health claims have to be obtained by petitioning the FDA. The FDA, you have to um, prepare, uh, you know, an in-depth um, um, documentation, an in-depth argumentation, including all the clinical trials, not only the good ones, but the bad ones as well, and um, make your case to them. And then it takes a while, and then they come back to you a lot of the time, and they want more. But at the end of it, um, the FDA acknowledged that, in their words, um, they'd be willing to exercise es enforcement discretion. They'd be willing to exercise enforcement discretion. That means they wouldn't come after um, brands that would carry PS uh, to allow claims that PS may reduce risk of memory decline or cognitive dysfunction or severe dementia in the elderly. So FDA then has approved qualified health claims for PS that it may reduce the risk of memory decline or cognitive dysfunction or severe dementia in the elderly. Now, they do require language to the effect that they don't endorse PS. So FDA says, we don't endorse PS, but we're willing to um, not be so aggressive in coming after brands that make responsible claims about PS. And that is indeed what has happened. I, I follow the FDA warning letters, and um, I've never seen a warning letter having to do with PS. So it seems to be enjoying some degree of respect from the powers that be. The fact that FDA is allowing qualified health claims for for memory, cognitive function, etc., does not give people the right to make all kinds of outlandish claims for PS, because that doesn't do anyone but the most greedy people any good. And some of the studies you mentioned talk about a subject pool of individuals who may already show signs of uh, cognitive decline, show signs of memory loss. How does PS work? in a population or in an individual like like me who's in their mid-30s and still want to have a sharp brain moving forward. So sort of like, pre, can I preload my brain with PS to make sure that it continues to be sharp as I grow older? Um, yeah, you can, you can. Um, you, know, you know, PS has fundamental functions, not only in the brain, but throughout the body and uh, you're certainly um, helping yourself by, by giving your body an allowance of PS, which may plug in, uh, um, you know, in situations where there are issues. And one of the areas where there are issues is um, stress, especially acute stress, stress on the job, um, stress that happens to us, you know, day by day during the course of our of our daily life. And, and we have three double-blind trials on PS for this type of acute stress. In the first double-blind trial, undergraduate students, undergraduate university students, average age just 21 years old, took either PS or a placebo for 30 days. Then they had to take a time-limited, supervised mental arithmetic test. The sort of stuff that I had to do in Jamaica when, when I was a kid, you know, before calculators came along and before school became so liberal. Um, but these university undergraduates had to take a time-limited supervised mental arithmetic test 
that was designed to raise their stress levels, designed to cause them to perceive stress. So they had to do these complicated arithmetic calculations purely in their heads. And the group who had received PS generally stayed positive, clear-headed, composed, and confident. The group who had been taking a placebo generally went negative and reported feeling more stress. In other words, you know, sort of freaking out at this challenge and, and reporting on the questionnaires that during, while doing this exercise, they definitely felt more stressed. So that's one example. Do we know what dose? Um, 300 milligrams for 30 days, which, which is the dose used in most of the clinical trials. And I'd like to get to that issue as we move along. So a second double-blind trial on acute stress involved golfers, of all people, aged 20 to 55. So first, before anything, they were all tested for their accuracy of driving balls 148 yards 20 times at intervals of less than 15 seconds. So you got the balls, bang, 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 and the accuracy was measured according to golfing criteria. Um, then they were randomly assigned to take PS or placebo for six weeks and were tested again. So then they had to do that golfing exercise once more, 148 yards, 20 drives within 15 seconds of each. Those on PS showed better driving accuracy by about 22% versus those who had got the placebo. There is this one study that particularly looked at the performance of golfers and their accuracy. Tell us a little bit about how phosphatidylserine helped them become more accurate. As we talk about PS for dealing with, for coping with acute stress, especially in younger people, uh, I think of the double-blind trial that involved golfers aged 20 to 55. Before the trial began, they were tested for their accuracy of driving balls 148 yards 20 times at intervals of less than 15 seconds, which they found stressful, which was designed to stress that. Then they were randomly assigned to take PS or a placebo, to take phosphatidylserine or a placebo for six weeks and were tested again. Um, those who had got phosphatidylserine showed better drive accuracy by about 22% versus those who had got the placebo. And I would imagine that any serious golfer who could improve their golfing accuracy by 22% uh, would be really impressed with the results of this study on phosphatidylserine. So we have yet another uh, double-blind trial on acute stress in young persons with phosphatidylserine or PS. And this involves subjecting young men of average age 25 to what was called acute auditory stress. And this involved having to read aloud from Immanuel Kant, an 18th century philosopher known for his intricate sentence structure. You know, people complain online that they have to read Kant over and over and over again, each sentence to try to understand um, what he's saying in much of his writing. And on top of this compli complex sentence structure, um, there was a delayed echo imposed on their um, reading aloud of Immanuel Kant. So those among these young men who were on the phosphatidylserine for six weeks showed better relaxation. And this was actually objectively measured using a method called EEG, called electroencephalography. Uh, and those who were on a placebo were found not to have um, particularly good relaxation while reading Immanuel Kant um, with a delayed echo. So phosphatidylserine then seems to also be able to help when you're under um, auditory pressure, not just concentration pressure, but 
the this idea that with all of this stuff going on, all this noise going on, you're being distracted. Um, so then we also have two double-blind trials with phosphatidylserine for mood. And these trials indicate that it can improve mood in elderly men and women while also improving their memory. So there are people who, as they are losing their memory, go into depression, um, probably linked to realizing that their brains are not working very well. And in those people, phosphatidylserine uh, can improve um, their, their outlook on the world as well as improving their memory. And the nice thing about this is that um, PS doesn't clash with, with any of the other substances people may take to help improve their mood. It's extremely well tolerated, um, no known drug interactions, and so it's um, um, a very, very safe, phosphatidylserine is a very, very safe nutrient to take. So I would like to peel that onion a little bit further into the science behind phosphatidylserine and, and just to kind of help have you explain what role it plays within the membranes, how those work, and how it helps with different synapses, communications. So give us a little bit of a breakdown in a way that is not too academic, but a little bit easier to understand for us longevity enthusiasts, how phosphatidylserine truly gets into it gets into action in a way that is meaningful and evokes those fantastic results. How phosphatidylserine or PS works uh, is very interesting. And it works at such a foundational level in our cells. That basic action has ramifications for practically all of our life processes. Uh, the key to the power of phosphatidylserine is that it's an essential cell membrane building. Practically all of our life processes depend on our cell membranes. Without phosphatidylserine, our cell membranes can't function. To, to sort of help you to get oriented, let's look at the illustration of a generalized animal cell and the membrane systems that make it up. So let's take a look at this illustration. Um, cell membranes are continuous sheets of molecules that are highly metabolically active. All of our cells have an outer membrane, which is a living boundary between the outer environment and the cell's living contents. And the activity of the, of the enzymes and other proteins in that outer membrane actually define, define the chemical character of the interior of the cell. So the membrane is, is if you will, um, um, uh, a, a regulator of the cell's internal environment. So built into the outer membrane are sensory enzymes, enzymes that transport nutrients into the cell, other enzymes that export molecules the cell has made um, to travel to the rest of the body, enzymes that send signals out to the rest of the body, and enzymes for numerous other functions that manage our life processes. The expanded view of the outer membrane at the lower right reveals a continuous double layer of molecules which represent the phospholipids that include phosphatidylserine. Now, within the cell are other sets of membranes that create unique functional compartments, all of those containing phosphatidylserine, and each of them containing specialized sets of enzymes, enzymes that are specialized for the functioning of that particular compartment. So, for example, the mitochondrial membranes seen in brown generate energy. The double membranes of the nucleus seen in blue manage the DNA and the genes and the chromosomes and the proteins that regulate these um, genetic um, um, structures. Every function of our cells is linked to membranes. And in all of our cells, 
every type of membrane must contain phosphatidylserine in order to function properly. Do we know in the realm of research if there's any data on how much phosphatidylserine declines with age? There is another urban legend about phosphatidylserine, which is that it declines with age. Its content in our cells declines with age. That is a that is a, a, a terrible misunderstanding of, first of all, what is measured in the brain, but also what, what PS does and how important it is for our cells. In terms of its content in our cells, it does not decline in age. No. If you're looking at a brain that, if you're looking at an autopsy, an autopsied brain that um, comes from a person who has had pretty serious memory decline, the brain itself can be smaller because the brain has lost nerve cells and lost nerve cell connections. And in that way, if you would measure the amount of PS in the whole brain, you'd see less, but you'd also see a lot fewer cells and a lot fewer connections. So, so PS is so important that it is concentrated, it is most concentrated in the membranes of our nerve cells. And especially at the synapses, the connecting points between nerve cells. Um, so at the synapses, the connecting points, phosphatidylserine is absolutely required for chemical messengers to be released, to be released from the upstream nerve cell and then travel across the gap to the downstream nerve cell. The chemical transmitters, whatever they are, acetylcholine, um, serotonin, dopamine, uh, whatever you'd want to consider, are packaged in little bags of membranes. And in order for those bags to be released and release the transmitters, phosphatidylserine is required. So without phosphatidylserine, there would not be electrical activity in the brain. There would not be chemical transmission activity in the brain, chemical messenger transmission activity. So um, the relative ratios of PS in the existing healthy tissue don't change. However, having said that, I can easily envisage a scenario in which, um, and, and some of the clinical data imply this, when the brain is fading, when the brain is losing function and losing connections, giving PS is a means to actually facilitate rebuilding connections. And there is animal experimental work that suggests that giving the animal PS can cause the animal, the brain of the animal, to make more of a growth factor called nerve growth factor, which actually stimulates nerve cells to repair and maintain and make new connections. So phosphatidylserine then may well be a regenerative factor at the level of the individual nerve cell and the individual connections among the trillions of connections that we have in our functioning brain. So in that sense of being a regenerative nutrient, phosphatidylserine uh, contributes to extending our health span as well as extending our prospects for a longer life. There are other functions of phosphatidylserine as well, um, and that is to, to maintain um, intricate three-dimensional structure in, in the various sets of membranes in all our cells. Structure which, which is essential to the functioning of the particular enzymes and other proteins that are specialized to work in those membranes. So PS and the other phosphatidylserine and the other phospholipids contribute to um, a microenvironment in which our membrane enzymes and proteins can work at their best. It also contributes to maintaining energy production in the mitochondria, which are the double membrane structures that generate more than 95% of all our energy. And phosphatidylserine also enables our cells to respond to signals from the outside environment, 
and to send signals to other cells that originate in the outer membrane. And phosphatidylserine also has other vital functions not, di not directly related to the brain, for example, in the circulatory system and the immune system. So it's no wonder that there are thousands of publications on PS um, in PubMed that range all the way back to um, 1957. So if you enter phosphatidylserine, P-H-O-S-P-H-A-T-I-D-Y-L-S-E-R-I-N-E, -E, uh, in any biological database, you find thousands of entries. Why does it matter where phosphatidylserine is derived from? Uh, in my understanding, it's either derived from soy or sunflower. The source in nature from which phosphatidylserine is derived matters only to the extent that it is allergen-free. So for a while, phosphatidylserine was made from soy, from soybeans. Now it's being made from sunflower, which practically no one has any allergy against. So the sunflower phosphatidylserine is really an excellent ingredient. And it's to the credit of ProHealth that you chose to use the sunflower phosphatidylserine. Give us some take-home tips, some practical and actionable ways of incorporating phosphatidylserine into our life in a way that it will set up our brain to age at best possible. What would you recommend for someone who's interested in adding this supplement into their routine in terms of where to start, what dosage is relevant, and um, potentially is it something they would cycle? No matter what your age, you stand to benefit, whether it's in terms of improving your coping with stress in your everyday life at work or at home, or whether it's um, helping to cope with times when your mood is not as positive as it may be, um, whether it's helping to optimize your capacity for learning, um, helping to conserve your memory. For older people, um, PS offers a real chance to help to conserve, uh, not only to conserve their memory, but also to rebuild some of what they may have lost. Uh, so in any adult of any age, there's a chance of benefit from PS. And I'm very happy about the ProHealth um, PS product because it's delivering 300 milligrams per serving which is the full um, dose in most of the clinical trials. So for somebody who is having memory issues and for younger people who want to get the maximum benefit they can, I recommend those two capsules a day taken with food. Um, for people who are definitely having trouble uh, with their memory, I actually recommend taking four of the ProHealth phosphatidylserine capsules, which would supply them with 600 milligrams of phosphatidylserine per day, taken with food. Uh, and that way, they have the best chance of getting benefit from phosphatidylserine. How soon will someone notice an effect with phosphatidylserine once they take it? Some people are lucky and feel it in less than three weeks, but the clinical trials really began to take uh, measurements at three weeks and sometimes later. And the reason for that is that we know that with cell membranes, it takes a while to build up, to build up the amount of phosphatidylserine in the cell membranes or for the phosphatidylserine to stimulate the cell to make fresh membrane. That's probably a more accurate um, explanation of what probably happens, that taking PS stimulates existing nerve cells to make new connections, to extend new connections and link up, make, make fresh linking connections between uh, uh, those cells and other cells. So it takes a while. It takes a while to, to get that... Um, effect of stimulating nerve growth factors, and then to extend the connections 
and to get the connections to work. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in some of the trials, we see already statistically significant benefit from phosphatidylserine at three weeks. I would recommend to anybody out there to take it for at least two months uh, and, and, and be sensitive to subtle changes. The changes don't necessarily come on strong. Um, this is not, um, this is not a, um, a, a, a direct um, stimulant of, you know, this is not caffeine or something like that. This is a subtle effect, but after a while, a person may begin to realize that their brain is actually working better. And there's also nothing wrong in taking it with other products that ProHealth may offer because it's so well tolerated. That was going to be my next question. Um, what would be the perfect brain stack that you would recommend pairing and combining phosphatidylserine with? You know, there are a lot of ingredients out there that have suggested brain benefit. Some of them have uh, a reasonable amount of evidence to support that claim. Others have very little evidence. And when a person is really in trouble, they may want to take a lot of things that claim to have benefit for the brain. Uh, but you're not giving your brain a good chance to improve unless you're taking phosphatidylserine. If you, if you really want to give your brain a shot, you take phosphatidylserine. Now, given that I have other organs besides my brain, and I have other issues besides um, a memory that is not perfect, uh, I can, if you like, I can share with you the supplements that I take. In addition to taking phosphatidylserine at 600 milligrams a day, I take a vitamin D3, 5000 IU soft gel, followed by a well-formulated multiple vitamin mineral that doesn't have magnesium oxide, which isn't absorbed, that doesn't have beta carotene, which is not properly converted into vitamin A, and for which I have other criteria that we might want to talk about um, another time. I take 150 to 300 milligrams of magnesium in a very pleasant chewable tablet that I help to develop. I also take a concentrated fish oil that gives me at least 1,000 milligrams per day of EPA and DHA. I take at least 1,000 milligrams of authentically buffered vitamin C, at least 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 from my mitochondria, 2,000 milligrams of a highly bioavailable curcumin, an excellent multi-ingredient prostate formula, lutein plus zeaxanthin for my vision, and vitamin K2 as MK7, which is a special need that I have metabolically, and a probiotic with multiple well-defined bacterial strains proven through clinical trials. So um, besides taking 600 milligrams of phosphatidylserine, I take a variety of other supplements. Uh, but of all of those, the vitamin D3, the multiple vitamin mineral, and uh, bioavailable magnesium, I think are crucial to anyone's um, supplement regimen. We didn't touch on the bioavailability of PS. Obviously, it, it needs to build up in the brain. So I would love to talk a little bit about, you know, is it crossing the blood-brain barrier? How is it getting, you know, once it's digested, is, how, is it getting through the digestive process and into our bloodstream? How, what, is it, what is bioavailability like? The bioavailability of PS is, is in a way mysterious. We know that it's well-absorbed. Um, uh, across the gut lining. But after that, it's very hard to separate out the absorbed PS, the absorbed phosphatidylserine from the phosphatidylserine that's circulating in the blood and which is already present in the tissues. Um, so um, we just know that it's, it's well absorbed when taken by mouth. And we know that in 30 clinical trials, it works. It is the best documented for consistently improving memory. It's when taken by mouth as a dietary supplement, it's very safe to take 
and it works consistently to improve memory. The best uh, mechanism of action that I can suggest for phosphatidylserine improving memory is that it's absolutely essential for our nerve cells to communicate with each other. Phosphatidylserine is required. It's concentrated at the synapses uh, where nerve cells meet each other. So we have around 86 billion nerve cells, and each of those makes at least a thousand connections with other nerve cells. So we have literally trillions of connections, uh, more than the stars that we can see in the universe. And each of those connections requires having PS concentrated where the packages of chemical transmitters are going to be released. And PS is also required downstream where there are big proteins that respond to those chemical messengers. So on both sides of the synapse, phosphatidylserine or PS is absolutely required for that process of chemical transmission and electrical activation to work. And um, there's a secondary mechanism as well, which is that PS is required for the mitochondria in the nerve cells to make energy. Uh, and and the, the better the mitochondria can make energy is the more efficient the nerve cell can be. So phosphatidylserine is part of the foundation of the functioning of mitochondria. There was an extremely well-designed clinical trial done at the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. Uh, by a team that also included researchers from Stanford and Vanderbilt and Italy, and they used very sophisticated testing for memory and learning to show, to generate data which indicated that phosphatidylserine, taking phosphatidylserine uh, could actually improve the functional age of the aging brain. So a person who was testing by these sophisticated um, psychometric tests, sophisticated psychometric methods, uh, a person who was testing at say age 70 in comparison to their peers after taking phosphatidylserine at 300 milligrams for three months, uh, could test at the age of 58. Or a person who was testing at the age of 85 might go back to testing at the age of 73. So this um, highly competent group of researchers published in a prestigious journal, Neurology, um, literally the words that P.S. phosphatidylserine can turn back the clock on aging. I've been asked to, to talk about ProHealth's P.S. dietary supplement. And I will say that this is really an excellent formula because it's a more powerful formula than others that are available since it provides 300 milligrams of phosphatidylserine per serving rather just rather than just 100 milligrams, which most other products provide. For persons who are having memory issues, I recommend taking the 300 milligram serving of PS as two caps a day, the dose used in most of the double-blind trials. However, this pro-health formula can also help people with more serious memory issues because I would like to see those people get four caps a day for a total of 600 milligrams of phosphatidylserine, and each bottle of the ProHealth product contains 120 capsules, which is a 30-day supply at 600 milligrams of phosphatidylserine per day. So this daily dose is safe to take and can make the well-needed difference for some people who are really having trouble with their memory. And it's also great that ProHealth test their PS product, their phosphatidylserine product extensively to ensure it's not contaminated and that they use a GMP certified manufacturer, GMP for good manufacturing practice. Um, I, I check the FDA warning letters all the time and, and 
it's still um, a problem with manufacturers who do not follow GMP, who do not follow good manufacturing practice. So credit to ProHealth for picking a really good certified GMP manufacturer. And then by being vegan, the ProHealth phosphatidylserine product is accessible to anyone who would want to try it. And I think that's really a, a very important feature of the product as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment below with any questions or feedback you may have. Send us some topics you would like us to talk about and discuss next. And also there's a ton of links in the descriptions with extra information that you can dive into to explore all the different aspects of longevity. So tune in next time. We're looking forward to seeing you.